Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Michelle Lin, um, and as Vinny said, I'll be talking today about a project that I undertook as a, a senior resident in emergency medicine. Um, it was done in collaboration with my colleague, Larissa Laskowski, who couldn't be here today. I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of the inspiration for our project, um, the descript a description of the curriculum that we developed, and then some of the qualities that we really felt made our program innovative. So as emergency medicine residents training at a busy public hospital, we'd all seen and treated countless patients who delayed seeking medical care or refused treatment because they were afraid that they couldn't afford the medical bills. Bellevue Hospital, where we trained, was the nation's oldest continuously operating public hospital up until last year when Hurricane Sandy caused the electrical generators to flood and our hospital shut down. When we reopened, we did so as a freestanding emergency department with no inpatient ward, few ancillary services, and limited radiology and laboratory services. So we had to deal with the challenge of not only limited resources, but an increased pressure to discharge or transfer patients as quickly as possible. This really provided an opportunity and impetus for us to start delivering more cost-effective care. We developed a 10-week educational curriculum with two goals in mind. First, to really instill residents with an evidence-based framework for clinical decision-making. And second, to reduce unnecessary testing in situations where there's unlikely to be clinical benefit. We came up with a list of commonly performed but often low-yield diagnostic tests, such as chest x-rays, blood cultures, urine toxicology screens, and coagulation studies, and we designed a lecture around each topic. We provided the cost of each test and then described, it, described three patient scenarios uh, that represented high, medium, and low pretest probability situations in which you might or might not order a test. For example, to illustrate the utility of a chest x-ray in the diagnosis of a pneumonia, we presented the low pretest probability case of an uncomplicated asthma exacerbation where the prevalence of pneumonia is very low. We, we, we described the intermediate probability case of a middle-aged adult with fever and a productive cough for whom a clear chest x-ray might cause you to forgo prescribing that ZPAC. And then we described a high probability scenario of a septic nursing home patient with purulent sputum for whom you might order a chest x-ray to exclude alternate diagnoses or maybe confirm a tracheal tube placement, but it wouldn't alter your decision to admit that patient and administer IV antibiotics. We really felt like our program was innovative for three reasons. First, it was completely resident-driven. Melissa <coughs> and I were senior residents at the time, and all of the lectures were developed and delivered by residents of all PGY, for, PGY levels. Um, we really felt that it was crucial to engage residents at every stage of training. Um, in fact, the earlier the better. And the process of creating these lectures was really an educational opportunity in and of itself. Second, we had very high levels of faculty and administrative engagement that allowed us to overcome two barriers. First, uh, the variation in attending practice patterns that residents often cite as a limiting factor to reducing ordering tests. And second, the involvement of our clinical director uh, who allowed us to um, actually uh, present uh, information on costs um, as well as some limited data on utilization after our intervention, which was subsequently incorporated into a QI project on reducing costs and improving efficiency. Um, third, our project is succinct, it's clinically relevant, and it's easily reproduced in any setting. It was specifically designed by and tailored to busy emergency medicine residents. We're planning to expand the curriculum by including more expensive diagnostic tests, such as BTs, um, and therapeutic modalities of questionable benefit, such as IV fluids. Um, we're hoping to develop a web-based module to disseminate the curriculum to other residencies. So if anyone here would like to help us with funding, I would love to hear from you. <laughs> um, you know, as some of you may know, emergency medicine, um, within our field, the idea of cost and stewardship is still relatively new and somewhat controversial. But I am proud to say that the American College of Emergency Physicians recently uh, announced its list of recommendations for the Choosing Wisely campaign. Um, our hope is that in the near future, with innovations like ours, um, that cost-conscious care in emergency medicine will no longer be innovative and instead become the standard of care. Thank you very much.